this recession is going to be shallow. It is going to be extremely deep and it's going to be long lasting and it's probably going to include a worse financial crisis than 2008. Think about it. There's no way that this recession could be mild. As I've mentioned on this podcast, recessions generally are proportionate to the booms that precede them. And those booms typically result from the mistakes that are made when the Fed keeps interest rates artificially low. Earlier this month, CPI data came in cooler than expected, but Jerome Powell's rhetoric remained hot. The Federal Reserve raised rates by 50 basis points and the Fed chair maintained a hawkish tone. Peter Schiff talks about the CPI data and inflation in this video. He said the bottom line is the Fed is still completely oblivious to the disaster it's created. Despite some optimism that CPI is cooling, Peter said we're never going to get back to the 2% target given the state of the federal budget, the massive deficits, the amount of money that's already been printed, and the amount of money it will need to print to monetize the debt. According to Peter, that is the really important point that seems to be lost on everybody. What investors are trying to figure out is has inflation peaked? Have we seen peak inflation? Now I think the answer to that question is no. I don't think inflation has peaked. Now it may have peaked for a short period. It may take until the second half of 2023 before we get a year-over-year -year rate of inflation that was higher than the high water mark for 2022. Who knows? Maybe it will take into 2024. But the one thing that I'm certain of is that we're not going anywhere near 2%. And that is what investors still don't understand, that the days of low inflation are over and we're living in an era of high inflation. That is a complete game-changer for the Fed and the Fed has yet to come to terms with this new reality, nor has the market. He also pointed out that investors who are playing by the old rules will lose if they don't adapt their strategy to the new reality of high inflation and higher interest rates. Despite the cooler-than-expected CPI data, there wasn't any signal that the Fed was softening its resolve. Powell said, we have a long ways to go to get back to price stability. Powell conceded that the economy has slowed down from its rapid pace. But Peter pointed out that we never really had a rapidly growing economy. We just had a lot of inflation that masqueraded as growth. We had a lot of Americans spending their stimulus money, running up our trade deficits, but that wasn't real economic growth. We would now continue with the video to listen to Peter talk about the Fed's scrupulous spending and how it has gotten us to a very dire point. As you watch, ensure to like the video, subscribe, and leave your comments below. But one of the things that reminds me of December 2018 is that back then, the Fed was raising interest rates and posturing as if it was going to keep raising rates, that it was committed to this policy of rate hikes and quantitative tightening, but it maintained that stance in the face of weakening economic data. In fact, the data was very weak, yet the Fed was oblivious to that data and instead was focusing on its commitment to return to normal interest rates and shrink its balance sheet. And so because the Fed was so resolute in that commitment, the markets were tanking. And what ultimately happened is Powell pivoted in January. And that's really what started the rally in late December was the anticipation of the pivot, which we ultimately got. The big difference, of course, is back then we didn't have an inflation problem on our hands. So the Fed was able to come up with an excuse to pivot because inflation was still below its supposed 2% target. On the other hand, right now, inflation is still well above that target. And so the Fed riding to the rescue to save the market with a pivot seems a lot less likely this January than it was in January of 2019. Now, the Fed didn't immediately start cutting rates in January, but it certainly telegraphed that the trajectory of increases was going to slow down. And we ultimately did get some rate cuts. The Fed initially described them as a mid-course correction. But of course, I pointed out in real time, that was just BS. That was the beginning of the move back down to zero. And that's exactly what happened. Of course, it took a pandemic to get us to zero. But if it wasn't the pandemic, it would have been something else. And of course, we ended up with QE4, which I always knew was coming. And in fact, I always said that QE4 would be bigger than QE1, 2, and 3 combined. And I was right on that as well. So the reason that December of this year reminds me of December of 2018 is you have a similar situation where you have the Fed committed to rate hikes despite the fact that the economic data continues to deteriorate. 
And if we're not already in a recession, and I believe that we are, even if it hasn't been officially declared, we will surely be in a recession next year. In fact, it seems almost unanimous. Just about every analyst and every representative from any major U.S. company, they're all saying that we're going to be in recession next year. That is very rare. Normally, if a recession is coming, nobody other than me maybe sees it coming. People are extremely reluctant to forecast a recession. But now it seems like everybody has a recession in their forecast. Now, the contrarian in me might say, wait a minute, if everybody expects a recession, maybe we're not going to get one. Well, the reason I still think you could be a contrarian here is because everybody agrees that the recession is going to be mild. It's going to be short. It's going to be shallow. So in other words, it's no big deal. So in that respect, the consensus is still wrong because there's no way this recession is going to be shallow. When asked about the pain of inflation, Powell said Americans would suffer worse pain if the central bank failed to act and let inflation run out of control. Peter said that ship has sailed. He said that the reality is that inflation is already out of control. We're already past the point where the Fed can regain control without causing not just a recession, but a financial crisis. The lower the Fed keeps rates and the longer it keeps them low, the more mistakes get made. Well, we've had near 0% interest rates for over a decade. We had four rounds of quantitative easing. The Fed inflated the mother of all bubbles. It's not going to be followed by itsy bitsy recession. We're going to have the mother of all recessions. It's going to be worse than the recession of 2007, 2008, which we now call the Great Recession. So this one's going to be greater than that. So either we're going to have to rename that recession or come up with an even more ominous name for the one that we're already in, but is going to get much worse in 2023 and probably beyond. Also, one of the other mistakes that a lot of investors make is believing that once the Fed succeeds in reducing inflation to 2%, that we're just going to go right back to those low interest rates that we've had since the 2008 financial crisis. Well, they're wrong twice. First of all, the Fed's not going to succeed in bringing inflation back down to 2%. And even if they did succeed, they couldn't immediately lower rates back down to the low rates that we became accustomed to, because that's why we have all this inflation. And if they tried to bring rates back down, any progress on inflation would be lost. So in order to get inflation down to 2% and keep it there, the Fed needs to normalize interest rates and then leave them there. In fact, it actually has to get restrictive. And then once inflation is back down to 2%, we can have a normal rate of interest. But normal interest rates are above the inflation rate because nobody will normally loan money for less than the rate of inflation because you're going to lose. You have to get some type of positive return for making a loan. So if inflation goes back down to 2%, maybe rates could be 3 or 4%. They can't go back down to 1% or zero, not unless the Fed wants to unleash the inflation monster that it supposedly just succeeded in corralling. But of course, it's not going to succeed in doing that because the Fed is not going to raise rates high enough to bring inflation down to 2%, nor is the Fed going to get any cooperation from Congress because we need cuts to government spending. But we're getting the opposite of that. We just got this omnibus spending bill, $1.7 trillion in spending. This is throwing gasoline on the inflation fire. We're increasing defense spending. We're increasing welfare spending. In fact, we're increasing defense spending on the Ukraine. Included in the omnibus spending bill was another $45 billion in aid for the Ukraine bringing the total so far this year to $113 billion. Now, first of all, to put that in perspective, the entire military budget for Russia for the year is $65 billion. So the United States alone has given the Ukraine about twice as much as Russia spends total on the war. And America is not the only country giving the Ukraine aid. The Ukraine is getting aid from Europe and maybe Asia. So a lot of money is going into the Ukraine far more than Russia is spending to fight the war. And it seems that if our real goal was peace, which should be our goal, instead of spending all this money to perpetuate a war, we should be doing everything we could to try to organize a peace because a peaceful resolution of this crisis should be in everybody's interest. But apparently there's so much money at stake, 
A lot of people are getting rich off the war, so the last thing they want is peace. Peter tagged this recession the mother of all recessions with reasons which he already pointed out in this video. He also mentioned the ambiguous amount of money being spent by the Fed to perpetuate the war between Russia and Ukraine instead of seeking a peaceful resolution which would be of more benefit to everyone. America's spending on the war alone has doubled the entire Russian military budget, and yet Americans are suffering and are in pain from the inflation and high cost of living. Talk about priorities. What do you think of the Fed's ravenous spending on the Ukraine war and neglect of the recession in America and the state of the global economy? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Also endeavor to like the video, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.